Hello guys, in this video I'll show you the DNA results, um, GED match results, uh, phenotype, predicted phenotype, predicted eye color, hair color, all that stuff of two ancient genomes, two ancient people from Sham Lake, uh, Sham Laka actually. Uh, the first genome was from the Bronze Age and let's get into it. So this is what this Bronze Age African scores with my Nashakot tool. It predicted him to have 94% likelihood of dark brown eyes and 99.6% likelihood of uh, black hair. So he probably had very dark hair and very dark eyes. Uh, I did not run him from s through Snipper 3, but I don't need to. I already know it's going to predict him to have uh, dark skin because he did not have any derived alleles in TIRP1. But now let's talk about the light coloring genes he did have because he actually did have uh, two. Uh, two genotypes that really struck my eye is uh, one is TPCN2 gene. He had two derived alleles in this variation. Uh, this is implicated in blonde hair in Europeans. And the other one is an OCA2 gene. He had one derived allele there, uh, which is implicated in blue eyes in Europeans. So even though his prediction is really, really dark, like no dark brown eyes, dark brown hair, uh, he still had some genes for lighter pigmentation. Uh, he actually did not have the warrior gene, which is very surprising. That's a very European genotype that he had. Um, just atypical, very atypical for Africans. Uh, it does happen, but it's just atypical. His genotype in DRD2 was quite typical for Africans and non-Europeans in general. You know, a higher likelihood of schizophrenia. Definitely not a no-go learner. His genotype in ACT1 sort of surprised me because apparently he had lower odds of cannabis-induced psychosis. This is a genotype that you most frequently see in Europeans, but he was an African and he had it. Uh, he did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in East Asian or Mongoloid facial features such as epicanthic fold or a flatter face. He did not have the sociopath gene, which is not surprising at all because pretty much no African has it. It's a very, only East Asians pretty much have it, but uh, this guy, this person from Bronze Age Cameroon did not have the sociopath gene. He also did not have the European allele that protects against myopia, so he uh, had an increased risk of myopia and nearsightedness. He did not have the European allele for lactose persistence and was likely lactose intolerant. He had a pretty average uh, genetic risk score for type 2 diabetes, but a very high risk score for Crohn's disease. In fact, he might have had Crohn's disease. He had an average genetic risk score for schizophrenia and an average uh, risk score for bipolar. Uh, however, he had a high risk score for brain aneurysm. This is what he scores with the EFIO Helix K10 calculator, uh, which is the calculator on GED match specifically for Sub-Saharan Africans. Uh, what can I notice here? I can notice here that the largest category that he scores is Biaka Pygmy. This doesn't tell me anything, but maybe it does to you. Uh, his oracle here is all the way messed up. Just look at the distance. Clearly, this calculator lacks some very important and relevant um, samples. Here is his results with Eurogenes K36. I actually like these much better. Uh, it's very like easy to understand. What's surprising is the Amerindian and South Chinese that he scores. That was a surprise to me. I actually simulated his G25 results on the basis of his Eurogenes K36 results. And with these results, he's closest to Bakola and, and Bedzan, Bedjan people. I don't know what these people are, so I had to look them up. And I had to see what they look like. And here is what they look like. Uh, actually, they do look, I mean, they look black, obviously, but they don't really look like very similar to black people in America. It's kind of like a different kind of black, like, you know, like Swedish versus Italian. They're both white, but they're a different kind of white. Uh, let's move on to the next sample. This sample is much more ancient. This sample is from the Mesolithic from uh, like 6k years before Christ. Very ancient sample. And let's see what uh, phenotype and GD match this person has. Now, this individual was predicted to have much lighter coloring than the previous individual from the Bronze Age. Still, still mostly black hair, mostly dark brown eyes, but there is 1% of hazel eyes and there is 1.16% of brown hair. And it is not a coincidence, guys. This person actually had two derived alleles in SLC 45A2's um, variation. I'm not going to spell out the variation. But this is a variation most important in skin color and eye color. And a fun fact, Mesolithic British person Cheddar Man lacked this mutation. But this individual from Africa actually had it. Uh, so Mesolithic British person from Cheddar Man did not have this light, eye, uh, light uh, skin color mutation, but this individual had it. 
Uh, this person also had two derived alleles in TPCN2s. I'm not going to pronounce the variation. Uh, it's a variation implicated in blonde hair in Europeans. He had one derived allele in OCA2s. I'm not going to pronounce it. He had two derived alleles in OCA2s. I'm not going to pronounce it. Just read read the, te read the text. It's on the screen. And this person actually had one derived allele in a SIPS variation, which I'm not going to pronounce. Uh, fun fact, I actually don't have uh, any light alleles in this variation. I, the author of this video. And this Mesolithic hunter-gatherer from Cameroon had a lighter genotype in Asip than me. Uh, and I'm a Russian from Northern Europe. This sample was much lower quality in terms of the amount of genetic data that I was able to extract from it. So um, I could not get the main variation in DRD2. That's about like no-go learning. But you can, you can pretty much assume that he was not a no-go learner. You can pretty much assume that he had an increased risk of schizophrenia based on that variation. Now, just like the Bronze Age guy, this Mesolithic guy from Shumlaka did not have the East Asian-derived EDAR, which is implicated in, in East Asian or Mongoloid facial features, so he did not have Mongoloid facial features. He also did not have the European lactose persistence allele and was likely lactose intolerant. He had an average genetic risk score for Crohn's disease, type 2 diabetes, and Parkinson's, and he actually had an extremely low genetic risk score for schizophrenia and bipolar, so definitely did not have those illnesses. Here is his result with Ethiohelix K10 on GZ match. Once again, this result does not mean anything to me. I don't understand it whatsoever. Uh, the only thing I can say about this result is that the Oracle, as I've said previously, sucks and uh, is lacking some very important samples. This is what he scores with Eurogenes K36, and anything surprising? Yes, there is something surprising here. Uh, did you notice? It's 1% South Asian and half a percent of Amerindian and half a percent of Oceanian. Uh, this is very surprising to me. And just like the previous sample, I simulated his G25 using those Eurogenes K36 results, and he is also closest to uh, Bedzan and Bakola, but he's also close to Bantus, which I do know and Baka and Hadza, which I think are in Kenya. Uh, here are some pictures of these uh, pygmy tribes like Bakola and uh, Badza. But, you know, if this person looked like anybody, he probably looked like them. Now, you guys actually stuck around until the end of my video. I want to thank you for that. And uh, as your reward for having this patience with me, you can download both of these files in 23andMe format from the link in the description. Um, yeah, enjoy. You can upload them to wherever you want and um, leave a like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the video.